She's lovely. Yes. You must have loved her very much. I adored her. It's quite easy to understand. I'm sure she was as sweet and gentle as she looks. She was. And those pearls she's wearing. They're really more beautiful than I'd heard. Would you like to see them? I'd love to. Would you show them to me someday? I can show them to you right now. Philip, will you? Excuse me. Here we are. May I hold them for a moment? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, they're incredibly beautiful. Why don't you wear them tonight? Oh, I'd be afraid. Nonsense. Wear them. This is a gala occasion we're celebrating tonight. Your birthday. Oh, but really, Philip, I won't feel safe for an instant. <laughs> In that case, I won't let you out of my sight an instant. <laughs> Don't ever let me out of your sight, darling. Car, please. Yes, sir. Happy? Wonderfully happy. Enjoy the party. It was delightful, darling, the entire evening. <laughs> Think you'd lost them? I've been worried about them all night long. Here they are. I'm almost tempted to steal them. If I hadn't promised them to my daughter Delia's wedding present, I'd turn them back and let you. <laughs> She's a lucky girl. I suppose she'll be getting married soon. Hardly. She hasn't met the man yet. Oh. When will she be home? Tuesday. Boat sailed yesterday. I want you to meet her, Benny. I'm sure you'll like each other very much. Thank you again, Philip. I should be thanking you. You can't possibly know what your friendship means to me. How happy it's made me. I'm enormously grateful. Good night, Philip. Good night, my dear. them right under his nose and he never knew the difference. Let me have them. <laughs> there they are. Okay. I'm glad that's over, though. I couldn't have stood that old fool for another day. Yeah? Did you find out what I asked you to? Well, sure. The phony necklace goes back into the safe until his daughter gets married. And from what he's told me, that's a long way off. Okay. By the time he finds out what's happened, we'll be collecting our social security. Jim, how long will it take to get rid of them? I'll cable Gorlick in Amsterdam tonight. He's been waiting to hear from me. I'm afraid I was a bit clumsy in handling them. Yes, well, let's see. Oh, the clumsy. 
clasp seems to be all right. They'll just have to be restrung, Mr. Jordan. That's all. Good. Will you send them to my office when they're ready? Certainly. I'll attend to it myself. Thank you. Thank you. The gentleman from Marche, the jewelers, is here. Send him in. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Mr. Jordan, but it's about those pearls. Yes? Well, what about them? They're imitations, sir. Imitation? Yes, very clever imitations. No question about that. You see, sir... Did you bring them with you? Oh, yes, sir. Here they are. I think I know what's happened. But the real necklace, sir... Is quite safe. Sorry about the mistake. Thank you. Oh, not at all, Mr. Jordan. I... I'm happy to be of service. Good day, sir. Good day, Mr. Jordan. Hello, Stanley? Yes, Phil? Will you come in here? I want to see you. Be right in. And this morning, when I took them to the jewelers to have them repaired, they discovered that they were clever imitations. Worthless. What can I do about it, Stanley? Well, there's only one thing you can do. Call the police. No, I don't want to call them. Look, if this girl has stolen those... Oh, I know that she took them. But I can't prove it. Besides, there's Delia. It wouldn't be a very nice homecoming for her. All that publicity. Yes, that's right. It's bad enough to know you've been a fool about a woman without letting the world in on it. Well, Phil? First, I'm going to give her a chance to return them. <laughs> but, Phil, there's been some horrible mistake. Why, why... Well, how dare you? You know perfectly well that I... That I... There's no need in discussing this matter any further. I'll be over at noon, and I'll expect you to return them. Well? He'll be here at noon. What are we going to do, Jim? My darling, you're the most glamorous, the most colorful, the most exciting female I've ever known. Such grace. Such savoir-faire. What has Eleanor Holm got? That you haven't. Well, I could mention several delectable items. And if I may say so, sir, I think you've been laying it on a bit thick. After all, it is only a fish, you know. Only a fish? You call this finny beauty only a fish? Are you out of your mind? Well, if I am, sir, it's simply because I'm jolly well fed up with being a gentleman's gentleman to a lot of sardines. Sardines? That's blasphemy. Have you never read the life history of the salmon? Oh, but this is not like you, sir. I miss the thrill of the chase, the drama. Or the private life and loves of the smelt? Uh, life was exciting then, sir. We were always on the go. Or the confessions of the shrift? Ah, exciting it was, sir. With the police just half a step behind us and their hot breath on our necks. Now, now. Now, Jameson. Oh, forgive me, sir. But it grieves me to see you being so domestic. Don't you miss the old life, sir? And all the people we met? They're right here, James. All the people we ever knew. Look at them. All kinds of people. Observe their human-like qualities. They're exactly like us. Some are wise, some foolish. Some care for their offspring, some don't. Some are humble, some proud, 
Some loving, some cold. Hello, Jameson. Why, Mr. Young, this is indeed a pleasure, sir. Mr. Leonard's in the aquarium, sir. <laughs> it's a world like ours. I would suggest that you devote a little more time to the study of ichthyology and a little less time to mooning about the past. Stanley! How are you? Fine, Mike. It's swell to see you. Jameson, Scotch and so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Hey, what is all this? An astonishing world, Stanley. The fish world. Far, far back. Before the advent of man. Mike, I need your help. Of course. <laughs> How much? One hundred thousand dollars. What? Not joking, Mike. <laughs> well, I don't carry quite that much on me. You can get it. How? With these. Real? No. The young lady by the name of Benny Weldon has the real ones. And you want me to... Uh... Yes, Mike, I do. Sorry, Stanley. No more of that for me. Now, wait a minute. I haven't told you the whole story. It's not just the pearls. It's what happened to my partner, Philip Jordan. Oh, I read about that last week. Huh? Nasty accident. No accident, Mike. He was murdered. Oh? And his death is tied up with the theft of these pearls. And I want you to prove it. Stanley, you don't understand. I've got all I want to do right here. Besides, there are other good men, clever agencies you could contact. I'd hoped I wouldn't have to remind you of a promise you once made me when I, uh... When you helped me out. <laughs> Sorry I hesitated, Stanley. I'm at your service. Thanks, Mike. I knew you'd say that. I brought Delia Jordan along, Phil's daughter. She's waiting in the lobby. Oh, I'll ask her up. Miss Delia Jordan is waiting in the lobby. Ask her to come up, please. Miss Jordan? Yes? Mr. Lanny just phoned. Will you go up, please? Thank you. I guess he agreed to help. Darling, do you think you're doing the wise thing? After all, Lanyard, you know what he used to be. Are you sure you can trust him? Mr. Young wouldn't have suggested him if there'd been any question. Please don't worry. I, I can't help worrying about anything that concerns you, Delia. Oh, I know it's only been a week since we met on the boat, but... Well, I guess you just can't explain those things. Do you mind? Of course not. I'll call you as soon as I get home. I'll be waiting. He hardly mentioned Miss Weldon in his last letter. And that's all I know. I haven't seen the pearls in years. I see. Not much to go on, is there? Not much. What are your plans, Mr. Lanyard? Plans? I mean, your first move. What are you going to do to get started? Well, to tell the truth, Miss Jordan, I... I don't know. I rarely ever know how to get started. Well, I have some ideas. Splendid. Let's hear them. First, I think we should hire five or six detectives to watch Benny Weldon. Five or six? Yes. You should be able to get men you can trust. Oh, I think so. Naturally, there's to be no publicity. Naturally. I have a good photograph of the pearls at home. I thought we could have copies made. See that they're distributed to all the people who might be possible purchasers. Well, uh, suppose we give Mr. Lanyard a chance to think the situation over before we offer any further suggestions. Well, I don't see anything wrong with my ideas. I think we could make much better progress working together on this. Don't you? I'm afraid you'll find me rather boring, Miss Jordan. I've always agreed with the adage, he travels fastest who travels alone. Oh, yes. You're the lone wolf. Precisely, Miss Jordan. Well, I think we'd better be going. Good night, Mike. Good night, Stanley. Good night, Miss Jordan. Good night. Mike O'Lanyard, huh? The lone wolf. Oh, what a break. What do you mean, a break? Yeah. We spend a hat full of dough financing us, Romeo. Then we wind up tangling with the lone wolf. We haven't got a chance against him. You're right. But who said anything about working against Lanyard? He's on our side. Stop talking in circles. Don't you get the setup? We've got the smoothest operator in the world working for us. The lone wolf. All we have to do is wait for him to get the pearls. 
Now, your job is to stick close to that Jordan dame and keep us posted on everything Lanyard does. And then what? Then, when Lanyard returns the pearls, we move in and take them. Neat. Well, I think so. Someone's been here prowling. No, I didn't see him. But I'm sure someone was here. You must have been dreaming. Well, vases don't get knocked over in a dream. Ah, oh, stop worrying and go back to bed. Jim, I'm afraid. How much longer have we got to wait? When is Gorley going to arrive? Wednesday, huh? Yeah, and then our troubles will be over. You can arrange the party for that night and make it good. It'll help soften him up. Well, if that's all it takes, I'll throw a party for Mr. Gorlick that he'll never forget. Good night. Jefferson? Well. Good evening. Good evening. No cream, thank you, Jameson. Have some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Smoke? <laughs> You're really a very charming hostess. You make me feel quite at home. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get them? What? You were in Benny Weldon's apartment, weren't you? Couldn't help myself, sir. Miss Jordan's a regular vampire, sir. She fairly wormed it out of me. I hope you understand, sir. Only too well, Jefferson. Thank you, sir. Only too well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Did you get them? Why not? Because she didn't have them. Are you certain? Quite. Well, where are they? Oh, all right, Miss District Attorney. I'll tell you everything. A friend of hers, Jim, is keeping them for her. They're waiting for a man named Gorlick, a famous fence to arrive from Europe. They hope to sell the pearls to him. Good. Oh, I'm glad you approve. What do we do next? We? Of course. Well, as soon as we finish our coffee, we're going to take you home. Then I'm going to have a good night's sleep. Jameson. You mean you're going to sleep and do nothing? There's nothing we can do, dear lady, till Gorlick arrives. But... But nothing. Yes, sir. Jameson, order my car brought round. Yes, sir. I'll drive you home. Don't bother. I'll get a cab. If you insist. If there are any questions you forgot to ask, Miss Jordan, I'll be right here at home. Just uh, wake me up any time. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. 
That must be Miss Jordan now, sir. Good. Ralph. Good evening, Miss Delia. Fredericks. And where have you been? On the prowl. Now, look, you've got to stop this prowling or get me a new set of nerves. <laughs> Seriously, though, I, I don't like you going out alone like this. But I wasn't alone. I had Mr. Lanyard for company. If you can call him company. Is he making any progress? Oh, I suppose so. Vinnie Weldon did take the necklace. He's proven that much. And there's someone named Jim mixed up in it, too. He has the pearls now. They, they are planning to sell them to a fence. Garlic. Well, Lanyard did learn a few things then, didn't he? What's he going to do about it? I wouldn't know. He won't talk about anything but his ridiculous fish. <laughs> Somehow I have the feeling that he'll find out about Father's death. I'm sure he will. Nice not seeing you in the past few days. Has it? Delightful. Jameson, I have an important appointment. Mind if I change while we talk? But, Mr. Lanyon, I've waited for almost two hours to talk to you. Well, I'll just be in here. You go right ahead. Playing detective again? I'm not playing, Mr. Lanyard. This isn't a game to me. Of course it isn't. Sorry. I haven't heard from you in almost a week. So far as I know, you haven't done a thing. <laughs> there wasn't anything to do. What about the party they're giving for Gorlick tonight? Ought to be very interesting. Are you going? One can't go to a party uninvited, Delia. Very bad form. Oh, will you stop talking to me as though I were a child? I have a right to know your plans, if you have any. You seem to think... I think you're getting yourself needlessly upset. Why don't you go on home and let me worry about things? I won't leave here until I know exactly what you're going to do. My dear girl, I'm such a changeable person. I plan doing one thing and suddenly I do another. There's never any telling. However, I can tell you this much. I'm leaving to welcome an old friend who just got in town. Jameson, entertain our guests while I'm gone. Thank you, sir. But, Mr. Lanyard... Show her our fish. I'm sure they'll interest her. But, Mr. Lanyard... Good night, Delia. <clears throat> the fish, miss. Oh, you and your fish. Pardon me, miss, but they're not my fish. I loathe fish. Who's the friend he's going to meet? What's he to do with the case? That I can't tell you, Miss Jordan, but from Mr. Lanyard's manner today, I imagine he's out on the chase once more, like the good old days. Oh, I wish I were with him. It should be a glorious night. Glorious. Should it, Jameson? Why? I'm only judging by the past, Miss Jordan, but every time he's met Emil Gorlick, there's been a lovely mix-up. Lovely! <laughs> Ooh, I spilt the beans. I'd like to talk to Mr. Emil Gorlick, please, Mr. Lanyon. Mr. Emil Gorlick. Hello, Emil. <laughs> sure, this is Mike Lanyard. How are you? Well, I just heard that you were in town and thought I'd drop by and say hello. Why, well, yes, I'd be glad to. What's the room number? 810. I'll be right up. Hey, Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike Lanyard. Oh, it is good to see you. Come in. 
Come in. Hey, Bill, you haven't changed a bit in all these years. Let me see, it was Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Five years ago. Yes. <laughs> I was after the star of Iran. Remember? <laughs> what a beautiful emerald. Would I had it too. Right here, in my hand, till you came along and then... <laughs> ah, he was a smart fellow in those days. You were pretty smart yourself, Emil. Maybe I was a little luckier than you. Nine, nine. You was too lucky to call it luck. <laughs> Budapest. Remember? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think of it. Forty-three thousand dollars I pay you for the plans of the new army tank. Well, what do I get? A scale drawing of Napoleon's royal coach. <laughs> Ah, uh, those were the days, Emil. Yeah, 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 well, pros to my Rose. Forty-three thousand dollars. Tell me, Mike, what was the three thousand for? <laughs> that was sales tax, Emil. <laughs> uh, and now, now you are settled down, a respectable man, yeah? Well, that's not entirely true, Emil. I manage a little excitement now and then just to keep my hand in. So? Yes, that's why I looked you up today. I have a little uh, trinket that might interest you. No, 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 no more of your tricks, Mike. Of course not. I just want to get rid of the fin, that's all. Yeah? How much? Well, you know what it's worth, Emil. $5,000. And you will take a thousand? It's a deal. Good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just to make sure I get the same fin, Mike. Oh, why, Emil, you don't think I'd cheat an old friend? I know you would. <laughs> but I don't give you a chance. <laughs> no. Now, you have the money, I have the pin. We're both satisfied, yeah? Right. Emil, you and I are going out to celebrate. I'm invited to a party tonight, and you're going with me. Ah, I'm sorry, Mike. There's going to be a lot of pretty girls. So? No, 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 no. Another night, baby. Tonight, I, I am busy. Oh, Emil, that's too bad. I especially wanted you to meet the two people who are giving this party. Yeah? They're artists like ourselves. Yeah? And they do very lovely work, yeah. too. <laughs> well, you must meet them before they leave. Vinnie Weldon and Jim Ryder. Ryder und Welden, why, that is where I go tonight, to their party. Really? Sure, we, we go together. <laughs> oh, Emil, we're in for a treat. They're a great pair, aren't they? Well, I'm glad to hear that. You see, I have never met them. Emil, that's the, uh, that's the best news I've heard in a week. Hm. I get my, uh, my, my lanyard! Stop it! Are you crazy? I, stop it, I, it hurts me more than it does you. Again, you do this to me. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Emil. I should have a better sense. That's right, you should. I should. Listen, Mike, yes. you promised me no more tricks. No, you should know better than to believe me. I should. Listen, Mike. Mike, I... I make you a proposition. Good, go ahead. No, no, no. Is that your proposition? Huh? But I, I know just how you feel. I feel <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> you? Quiet, Emil. Here, I think I'll take that. I'm just borrowing it, Emil. You'll get it back again. Uh, what did you do with that? Ah, yes. That was no deal, Emil. Ha. Goodbye, old friend. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me if you can. So, you and Gallic are old friends. Now, now, count ten before you strike, will you? I suppose you didn't think it important to tell me about him before. Sorry, Delia, but I'm in a hurry. You're always in a hurry when I want to ask you some embarrassing questions, Mr. Lanyard. Daniel? Lanyard? Young woman, you have made a mistake. I am Emil Gorlick. Gorlick? Yeah. 
And now I go see Mr. Ryder and Miss Veldum, who are giving for me a party. What? Surprised? So was Garlic when I tied him up. Tied him up? Why? Well, it would be awkward to have two Garlics running about the same party, wouldn't it? Oh, and now I go get my suspicious little girl's pearls for her. You expect me to believe that utterly fantastic story? No, but uh, run on home anyway, will you? And uh, gown the silver. Could be your butler has been up to something in the meantime. Good night. My good friend, you would save us both complications on the displeasure of my yes, host, yes. Mr. Heider. Excuse me, please. I am looking for uh, Miss Veldon and Mr. Well, you're Mr. Gorlick. Yeah, yeah, aren't you? <laughs> I'm Billy Weldon. Ah, yeah, yeah, Miss Veldon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, Mr. Heider, is he here too? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Jim. Jim, this is Mr. Golick. Well, hello. Welcome. I'm sorry you wouldn't let me meet you at the boat. Oh, well... Uh, Are your hotel accommodations satisfactory? Are you settled all right? Yeah, yeah, I am settled very securely. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, at last we meet. <laughs> I've heard a good deal about you, Mr. Gorlick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have also heard about you too, Mr. Idol. Come in, Mr. Gorlick. I want you to meet some very pretty girls. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That I should like. <laughs> <laughs> this part is for you, you know. You're the guest of honor. Oh? <laughs> Everybody, please. I'd like you to know Mr. Garlic. How do you do? How do you do? Hey, hey. What a lot of good girls. <laughs> How do you do? And you shall call me Emma. <laughs> See anything interesting, lady? Oh, uh, uh, I, I was just looking for... A... I know, you was looking for a nice room to rob. Let me go, how dare you, I'll, I'll... You won't mind if I take a look now, will you? What do you know about this? Let go of me, I say. Not yet, little lady, not yet. Come here. Oh. Just a minute. Come here. Don't try me. Take it easy. One time, you fool. There you are. Take so long. What happened? Happened? I've been robbed. Robbed? Robbed, I say. Well, we'd better let you talk to the hotel manager, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're ready to talk business, Mr. Gorlick, just say the word. Oh. Oh, no. We talk business now, and uh, then we come back to the ladies, huh? <laughs> And, uh, and then uh, you must tell me one, no? <laughs> yeah, uh, excuse me, please. <laughs> excuse me. What is it, Mr. Gorlick? What's happened? Well, hello, Miss Jordan. Do you know this lady? Well, certainly, Miss Delia Jordan. Why, what's the trouble? She was out in the hall peeking through the keyhole. He was in here tied up, said he was robbed. It is nothing, a mistake. You mean you weren't robbed? No, no, it, it's a joke, I tell you. <laughs> I don't suppose you'll be needing me any longer. Why, certainly not. Yes, miss. What do you mean by following it me? It is better you do not shout, Miss Jordan. Yeah, yeah.
Ja. Ja, ja, ja. Just like I said they were, aren't they, Mr. Gorley? Ja, they are magnificent. Then you'll buy them? Ja, I take them. It will not be so easy, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, I take them. Jim, what is it, Jim? Jim Ryder. Ryder, where is Ryder? Ryder, where is Ryder? Who are you? What do you want? I'm Emil Garlic. Ah, Stanley. Been waiting long? Good hunting, sir. Splendid. There they are. Ah, I knew you could do it, sir. Thank you, Davidson. I'm glad I didn't disappoint you. It's only when you're immersed in your fish that you disappoint me, sir. Mike, not even going to try to thank you. Afraid I couldn't do it adequately. Oh, forget it, Stanley. That's only half the job. The easy half. There's still the matter of Philip Jordan's death. With the pearls out of the way, I can concentrate on that. And maybe Delia will stop following me now. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if there's ever anything I can do for you. Oh, forget it, Stan. It's been fun getting back in harness again. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to get these put safely away. I'd better get along. Thank you, Jameson. Not at all, sir. Mike? Good night. Good night, Stanley. Say, uh... I won't need these fakes anymore. Perhaps you'd like to add them to your other mementos. Something to look back on when I'm 80? Right. Jameson, they're fouling up again. <clears throat> I'll go and draw their tub, sir. Why, Ralph, what are you doing here? Well, I've been trying to find Delia for hours. You haven't seen her, have you? No, I haven't. I thought she might be here with Mr. Lanyard. I was just going to call. No, she isn't. I just left Lanyard's apartment. This business is getting me down, Mr. Young. I guess you know. Delia means a lot to me. If anything should happen to her, I'd... Nonsense, Ralph. Nothing's going to happen. I hope you're right. Just the same, I... I think you can relax from now on. What do you mean? At least you won't have to worry about the pearls anymore. That much is settled. Well, good. Can I uh, drop you anyway? No, thanks. Well, good night, then. Good night, Mr. Young. Now, Miss Jordan, perhaps you'll tell us where Lanyard is taking those pearls. I tell you, I don't know Lanyard. I never heard of him. We can easily find out whether she's lying or not. How? Lanyard. Information? I'd like the telephone number of Michael Lanyard. Lanyard. L-A-N-Y-A-R-D. Them's an old beauty, Miss It's Daddy. Feed them? <coughs> Ooh, is wanted on the telephone. Hello. Hello, Lanyard. This is Jim Ryder. I call to congratulate you on your work tonight. You gave a fine performance. Oh, thank you very much. I hardly expected that uh, you'd appreciate it. I can applaud a good job, even if it is at my expense. It's too bad you left so fast, though. Mr. Gorlick brought a friend of yours with him. Delia Jordan. Who? I didn't quite get the name. Delia Jordan. She's here with us now. I don't know what you plan to do with the pearls, Lanyard, but if you'd hope to see them around Miss Jordan's neck, I'm afraid you're going to be a bit disappointed. You won't be too offended, Ryder, if I think you're lying. In that case, maybe you'd like to speak to her. 
Mr. Lanyard needs to be convinced. Say something to him, honey. Oh, my arm! Stop it! Well, Lanyard, do you believe me now? I'm afraid you've convinced me, Ryder. I'll be right over. Good. But don't come empty-handed and come alone. He's on his way over. I am getting out of here. I am through. What do you mean? I do not like this kind of business. But this is your chance to get even with Lanyard. You're not going to walk out on it, are you? I do not walk out. I run. Goodbye. Good luck, sir. Why, Mr. Lanyard, won't you come in? Thank you. Oh, good evening, Delia. I'm sorry I missed you before. I was called away rather... <laughs> rather unexpectedly. I don't see my old friend Gorlick. Isn't he here? Sorry, but he had to leave. Dear conservative Emil, still playing it safe. You'd do well to emulate him. Oh, I, uh, I only wanted to return this. I borrowed it from Gorlick earlier this evening. Wasn't there something else you were going to return? Oh. Oh, yes. Don't, Mr. Lanyard. I'm afraid I haven't much choice. And now I'm sure our hosts won't mind our dashing along, will you? Go ahead. And thank you, Mr. Lanyard. It's been delightful knowing you. Goodbye. Well, hardly goodbye, Miss Weldon. I'm sure I'll see you again. I wouldn't try to, Lanyard. Good night. Well, I've made a beautiful mess of everything. Me and my suspicions, butting in on you every time you try to help me. And now we're right back where we started. And it's all my fault. That's right. I hope it starts you to keep your pretty little nose out of matters you don't understand. It certainly has. Well, don't worry too much. After all, it's only a trifle. Trifle? I gave the real pearls to Stanley Young before I came to get you. Mr. Lanyard, you... you're simply... Terrific. Of course I am. There you are. Do you really think we have enough evidence to call on the police? We've got plenty. All right, then, if Stanley agrees. He's probably asleep. a few minutes ago, Delia. You told me that you'd learned your lesson, that you trusted me. I do. Good. Because I'm going to ask you to do something. It'll seem very strange to you. What? I want you to stay here and call the police alone. But you... I'm getting out of here. This has changed everything. Someone, not Benny or Ryder, is mixed up in this. They're in the clear. You were with them all the time. 
Whoever did this has the real Nicholas, and I've got to find out who that someone is. But the police will help you. The next crook? So far as we know, I was the last to see Stanley alive. I had the opportunity to kill him. That will add up to an airtight case with the police. What do you want me to tell them? The truth. Everything that happened. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I don't know yet. You'd better call them. Please hurry. This is all we're taking, understand, or you'll be leaving alone. What do you want me to do, go naked? What a clumsy way to pack. I wouldn't be quite so impetuous, my friend. You're not going to risk being shot just to hold on to a few phony pearls? Phony? Of course. You wouldn't come back here if they were phony? This visit has a much deeper significance, as you'll soon learn. I'd let you hang on to these, Ryder and get another one at the dime store. But they're closed and I can't wait until morning. Do you two mind uh, marching into that closet? What's the idea? Whim of mine. I'm the whimsical sort. Now listen, Lanyard. Come now, Ryder, humor me. I get awfully upset if I'm not humored. Afraid he'd be lonesome in there without you, Miss Weldon. Well, you've got the pearls. What more do you want? I can't have you two cluttering things up. I've got a busy night ahead of me and you just be in the way. Besides, there's the matter of Philip Jordan's automobile accident. That needs a little explaining. Now, now, get in there. Hurry. Say Lanyard returned the pearls to Mr. Young? Yes. When? About an hour ago. Did you see him return them? No. Well, then you've only got his word for it. Why, yes, but... It all adds up, Chief. Everything she's told us. Lanyard's our man, all right. No, it isn't possible. I think it is. Very possible. They were such close friends. How long have you known Lanyard? A few weeks. We've known him for years, and you can take our word for it. Where there's a fortune in jewelry involved, the lone wolf is generally there. Possibly in the past, but he was helping me this time. Besides, he was with me all evening. Not quite. He had plenty of time to kill Young before he came to pick you up at Miss Weldon's party. Why should he try to save me, risking his life? I don't know, Miss Jordan. Not yet. Well, Joe. Yes, sir. I want you to see that Miss Jordan gets safely home. Yes, sir. There's nothing more you can do, Miss Jordan. I'll keep you informed. Good night. Good night. What now, Chief? I think we'll go down and ask Miss Weldon and her guests some questions. I was just thinking of that. Open it up. Hey, Chief, look at this. Well, how did you two get in there? We were playing games. Why did Leonard lock you up? We asked him to. We like being locked up. Fine, then let's get going. You can't hold us. We've done nothing. When you got nothing to worry about, take him downtown and book him. What for? Well, we start with grand larceny and suspicion of murder. That ought to hold you till morning. I can't figure this lanyard out. Well, that's nothing against you, Dickens. Neither can I. Hello, Pete. 
Glenn, you're talking. Now listen hard. Someone just killed a friend of mine and snatched a string of pearls. What do you want me to do? I want this story passed around, spread to everyone you know. Whoever did the job didn't get the real pearls. He got duplicates, phonies, you understand? Say, the lone wolf stole the originals and substituted fakes. And this. The real pearls have been returned to Delia Jordan. Delia Jordan. You got that straight, Pete? Yeah. The real ones were returned to Delia Jordan. Hop to it. I'm counting on you. The more people hear about it, the better I like it. Thanks, Pete. Hey, Bill. You want to hear a hot one? The Jordan pearls were snatched tonight. So what? So here's the payoff. They were phonies. <laughs> Snarks! <sir. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. The lone wolf did the snatch first. He left pace, huh? <laughs> yeah. Cut the game and let's play poker. He planted phonies. That's what I heard. The dames got the real ones back. <laughs> yeah, sure. He gave the real ones back to the Jordan girl. I better get to a telephone right away. A nice evening's work. Yes, sir, a very nice evening's work. Yeah, you call murder nice. What are you worrying about? It wasn't part of our deal to kill anyone. Forget it. What's taking Albert so long? We should have been out of here long ago. Takes time to make the proper arrangements. Relax. Is everything set? When do we leave? We're not leaving. What do you mean? Those pearls are phony. What? How do you know? The whole town knows it. Delia Jordan's got the real ones. Well, why don't we make a trade? Let's go. Oh, it's an enchanting evening, sir. There's a tang of wild heather in the air. Stop chattering, Jameson. We have work to do. Oh, but this isn't work, sir. This is exciting, sir. Like the old life. Nights fraught with danger. Did you get out of the apartment unnoticed? Of course, sir. The police didn't follow you here? Certainly not, sir. <laughs> After all, one couldn't possibly have battled for the lone wolf all these years without having become expert at evading the police. However clever they may be. Forgive me if I have hurt your feelings. Oh, that's quite all right, sir. Jameson, check your watch with mine. We're together, sir. May I ask what you want me to do? Get back into the apartment, unnoticed. Oh, but, sir... Then I want you to leave again, but this time I want you followed. By the police? Yes. Oh, but really, sir, this is most unorthodox. Never mind, just follow my instructions. I'm gambling tonight, Jameson. The police want me for murder, but that's not important. The important thing is, I have only this one chance to clear up the case. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, sir. It's got to work, James. Come on. The three of us? Any objections?
Charles. Hello, Delia. I've been trying to get you for hours, Stanley. Yes, Young's I been... know. That's why I'm here. These are friends of mine. They may be of some help. I hope you don't mind. Why, certainly not. Please, won't you sit down? Is there anything, Miss Delia? No, Frederick. Good night. Good night, Miss Delia. Okay. The butler has just left, sir. Now maybe we'll find out where Lanyard's hiding. Jordan, we don't want to get rough with you, but let me handle this, Alberts. Sure, go ahead. Delia, I promise you won't be harmed if you'll give us that necklace that Lanny returned to you. The real one. Please, Delia, for your own sake, be sensible about this. So nice of you to worry about me, Ralph. Whether you believe it or not, I haven't got it. We know different. I'm sure you do. Maybe you even know who murdered Stanley Young. Come on, quit the stalling. Be smart and hand it over. Maybe she hasn't got it. I told you to keep out of this. Well, yeah, talking isn't doing any good. <laughs> good evening, gentlemen. I'm a bit late in returning the necklace to Miss Jordan. But in view of what has just transpired, it's been very fortunate. Wait a minute, you. Come on. I think as a matter of precaution, I'd better hold on to them just a little bit longer. Good night, gentlemen. Bring her along. Trap. We don't know where he's taking us. Well, it won't be to the cops. Lanyard's wanted for murder. Don't get 
too close. Yeah, don't get too close. Too close, Chief? What's that fool doing anyway? It looks to me like he's giving the windshield a cleaning. Looks to me like he's giving us the runaround. That's just what I was thinking. You know, I think that guy is wise to us. Follow him anyway. Yeah, follow him anyway. Looks mighty suspicious, mighty suspicious. Don't it? My good man. Search the ferry. No, oh, if you're looking for Mr. Lanyard, he's just arriving. What? Well, well, what a surprise. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm delighted to see you. The feeling's mutual, Lanyard. Look him over. So, look at these, Chief. Oh, you should have ditched these, Lanyard. There's enough evidence here to cook you to a crisp. Huh. I wouldn't jump to conclusions, Conroy. Suppose you have a look at the estimable gentlemen who are just arriving in that car. You see, they have the real necklace. Those are phonies. What's the gag, Lanyard? I suggest that you ask Miss Jordan. They're holding her in that car. Get it. All right, Jim. Stay with him. Well done, Jameson. Perfect timing. Oh, it was nothing, sir. Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, I almost misjudged the time. I had to take several detours. And I, Jameson, had to take several shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure you'll find that to be the real necklace. Well, well, I better not get these two mixed. Anything else you want to know, Inspector? No, I think I've heard all I need to. Thanks. Will you excuse me, then? There's still a few questions that I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Will you answer just one more question? Delia, I'm getting seasick. We've been sailing back and forth on this ferry for hours. Please. Just one more question? Uh-huh. If you promise, it's the last. I promise. You knew they had the real pearls, didn't you? Uh-huh. 
And you could have stopped them at my house. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't you? For a very selfish reason, Delia. Strange as it may seem, the police don't trust me. <laughs> I doubt if I could have convinced them any other way. They had to find the real pearls on the real culprits. You see? Uh-huh. Well, what will we do now? Well, the aquarium should be opening soon. I'll show you around if you like. I like. <laughs>